Hi, people. This is Stevie Wilson for LAStory.com. We have filmmaker Linda Brown, who's, who has a new film, an independent film, launching about her dad. It's a really fascinating story, and I really don't want to be the one to tell it, so I'm going to let Linda step here in, in a second. But if you have an opportunity to catch this at a local film festival or to see it online, this is something very unique. So let's talk about, let's jump into this movie. I had made my first documentary about my relationship with my father. He's a, he is a difficult man. We were close. We were, we were buddies. We spent a lot of time together. But there was always a disconnect. I felt like he wanted to be more present. He wanted to be connected to the family. But there seemed to be something that prevented that. So in my very first documentary um, called Your Favorite, I, I tried to address those issues. And, and I suspected it had something to do with his history and his past. But I was a pretty young filmmaker and not that experienced, and I never felt that I really got the answers that I was seeking. So in 2004, uh, when my father had a, a debilitating stroke, I figured it was a perfect opportunity for me to, at that time I thought would be to record his recovery, but also to go back and revisit some of those questions that I didn't feel satisfied with the answers at my first go-round. And um, actually, I started to dig into his past, and I found out a lot of interesting things. And in the course of that, started to um, discover some secrets about our family, some lies about his past. And then, unfortunately, he passed away in 2006. And there I was, left with all this information. And how was I to make sense of it? and to understand it. And so that's pretty much what the journey was in this film, which is with this information, how do I understand my family, the dynamics of what went on within my family, how our parents' histories contribute to our family life, and then who we eventually become. What do we carry with us through that legacy? So that's how I then got involved in pursuing this film. And, and quite frankly, I think if everybody had your determination, we would all have better situations of understanding who we are and our place in the universe. It's not easy. It is not easy. You must have found out information that was not always palatable or easily understood. All families have secrets and scars to some degree. Yes. Some more than others. Um, but it's, it's not so much the secrets and scars. It's, it's how we try to... We spend a lot of energy keeping them uh, undercover. And then the shame starts to erupt, and that takes on a life of its own. And I think that's what audiences are responding to. Um, after people see the film off and they'll say, you know, this happened in my family, or there's been an incident that we've never discussed, and there's this collusion among us, not verbal, nonverbal, that we just won't discuss it. And when someone in the family says, I have to talk about this, it really disrupts the, um, the status quo that's been going on for sometimes years within a family. Oh, absolutely. I, I've been that person who's disrupted <laughs> my family <laughs> we because group, of it. The disruptors. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because, you know, they're don't leave me as the only person that this has happened to because if this has happened to you and may know live the what essentially is a lie or a fable, if you will, mm -hmm. a dream sequence that you wish your life was really like that, that everybody else is bought into and you just can't. Right. And it's interesting because another kind of common theme is that when uh, audiences see it, um, they'll say, you know, it's interesting that um, although my siblings and I all grew up seemingly in the same household, our memories and our recollections and our experiences, the way each of us individually experienced that household, um, can be very different. So one sibling may say, yes, I clearly remember this. This was very traumatic to me. And another sibling may say, as extreme as I don't have any memory of that at all, or to a lesser degree, yeah, it was somewhat like that, but you seem to exaggerate it. And that seems to be something that occurs within families, the, the amount of um, uh, memory that some people have or siblings have as opposed to others, also the amount of effect that it had on some of the siblings as opposed to others. 
Um, and I suppose that has to do with the amount of uh, how much do you really want to look at this or how much do we just want to sweep it under the carpet and say, well, that's the past and let's just move on. The only way to move on, though, is to take a look at what's, go what's happened, look at it, address it, and go, okay. And I'm sorry that, you know, and acknowledge whoever it affected and how it affected them, because if it didn't affect you, you, you got maybe got off lucky. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then, okay. then try to maybe connect in a deeper, different level. But not everybody wants to do that. No. It's, it's, it is, it's isolating at times. It is painful. But but I think that only by I think by acknowledging the truth you can heal. So mm -hmm. healing was a big factor for me when I discovered um, some when I relived some of the painful experiences when I had to revisit some of those lies and secrets. Um, for me, my goal was how do I heal from this? And fortunately for me, um, there was not only healing but I could. Uh, form new bonds. I became, through this process, after my father passed away, I became much closer to my mother. And we had never had a very close relationship. I was always my dad's favorite, and that's who I went to for my nurturing and my fun, and uh, we seemed to be just easily connected. Um, not so much with my mother, but going through this whole filmmaking process, asking the questions, spending time with my parents when my father was post-stroke and um, my parents needed some caregiving help. Um, we actually, my mother and I got closer in a very different way than I had a relationship with my father, but still a very vital relationship. It's amazing that you could rebuild a better relationship with your mom than what you had always experienced. Did you feel that you, you got a deeper sense of who your dad was? Yes. I, I, I realized that, that he tried desperately to, um, to heal himself. To, family was very important to him, so he was a very dedicated family man, and as much as he put his dedication and loyalty into his family, because he had these big holes in him, it prevented him from really being there for us. Or it, you know, when he wanted to be able to be compassionate and close, he just was scared and distant. Um, and I never understood why. And, and then I started to carry, maybe there's something wrong with us. You know, we do that. Well, now we're the ones who are at fault or there's something missing in us. And so that's what I mean by the cycle that gets carried on in these kinds of feelings uh, unless they get addressed. Um, I realized that my father probably had a, a form of um, undiagnosed and untreated depression his whole life. And that I felt compassion to him, that he had struggled with this. Um, he did not come from a family that was educated. Therapy was not going to be part of their, um, the way they, you know, pursued their problems or solved their problems, I should say. And um, so he just did the best he could. And in that generation, it was also, it was often, okay, my reaction to my frustration and my inability to deal with my life and cope with things is either through anger or often through self-medication of alcohol. Yes. And so all these things were very common. Exactly. Like, well, of course that's what men do. You know, they either strike out or they self-medicate and they go with their buddies and they have a good time. Um, and these were seen as very acceptable ways to deal with one's problems. Um, and so, yes, I did. I ended up having a great deal of compassion for his suffering. It's surprising how many times that as children, we think that we must have done something wrong when mom or dad can't connect with us because they're dealing with something within themselves. That they're mm -hmm. that fighting the demons, as it were, mm -hmm. and it gets transmitted to the kids as something that it's about them and it's not about them. It's about their mom and dad. And when you figure it out, you kind of go, "Oh, you mean it's not me? Mm -hmm. Yes, I wasn't a bad kid. Right. I wasn't a disappointment." Right, right, right. And I, I think it's, and, and, it's that, and it's true of that in, in so many ways uh, when people started sharing. Any, anytime there's shame associated with a topic, the only way to rid that shame and start to move forward is to start to talk about it. And, you know, my talking about my father's, you know, depression and, and 
mental illness, health issues, and, and things like that, I've become much more sensitive to um, other people kind of revealing to me, oh, yeah, I, I've suffered with that, or I still have bouts with depression. Um, and this sense of isolation that we feel is, is so frightening because we're all walking around thinking everybody else is okay and I'm not okay. And I've discovered we all, no matter how much success we have, no matter what station we are in life, most of us, I will speak for myself included, walk around thinking that person has it made, but if they only knew what's really going on inside of me. And if we start breaking down that isolation and saying, I feel vulnerable, I feel scared, I feel like I'm not sure of my decisions at times, or am I the only one who feels this way, there's a tremendous outpouring of, oh, you too? Exactly. And then all of a sudden, all that, it starts to, to dissipate. It starts to, oh, I'm not alone. Thank you for sharing that. Um, this, to me, is the exciting part of, of this movie, that if, if it can begin a conversation for whatever the topic is, whether it's mental illness, domestic violence, um, you know, I feel guilty because I'm supposed to be doing a better job caregiving for my parents and I resent the fact that they're eating up so much time. It's the sharing of those feelings that I think um, will make us feel more connected um, and break that stigma and isolation of um, you're alone in this. Nobody else feels like you. There's something wrong with you. Um, it's an amazing thing when I share the film and a few days later someone will come up to me and say, I really get your movie, and then start to tell me their story. Yeah. They're, they're very different, but the common thread is this, um, I felt alone, I felt ashamed of admitting it, I felt like if I shared it with someone, they'd think there's something wrong with me. So I understand you've got a showing of this next month in June. June 5th, 245 Dances with Films Festival, I will premiere this You See Me. So, people, we'd like to thank Linda Brown for her time today. This is a really – I'll take a look at this trailer. Watch it once or twice or three or four times. Mm -hmm. Share it with your friends. Share it with your family, particularly if you have people who are older and maybe in assisted living or have chronic illnesses that you're seeing them kind of deteriorate. There's meaning here for lots of different topics and lots of different people. It's definitely worth seeing if you have the opportunity go do it. And this is Stevie Wilson for LAStory.com saying see you soon, people. Bye.